So here I'm going to talk about how to write a paper in LaTeX, which is sort of the professional way to put together an economics or mathematics paper. I'm not going to lie, a lot of times it's a lot easier just to use Word um, because spell checking is better, organization is better, it's more visual. A lot of times professional journals like actually won't accept latex submissions, so you have to put it into Word. Um, but that said, um, it's very important to have this as a skill. And also, if you want to have anything that's semi-permanent or permanent, you want it to look professionally typeset, this software will do it. Okay, so uh, if you're starting out, if you're undergraduate with an economics degree, you want to have this as a skill set. Uh, and professionally, like I said, some stuff I just put working papers online. It looks more professional, and it's also an important signal um, in the professional world that you can use professional looking software. People don't take you as seriously if you write in Word. So that said, um, submitting to a conference or a journal or whatever, um, I would use Word. But uh, you want to have good expertise using this. The only way to really learn it is to do it. So if you put together a paper, you're going to have to look stuff up as you go. So I put this as a zip file on my GitHub site. I've got an image. I've got a permanent final paper. Sometimes this will overwrite what you have done, so you want to make sure that you don't lose everything. It's got some auxiliary files. It's got a bibliography file. And then, of course, it's got the, um, the LaTeX file here. So I use software here. You can see uh, I use TechWorks. Um, there's a number of them out there, but this is the one that I used, and here's the link. Um, but there, there's a lot of versions to so find the one that works for you. Um, one thing I have here is you might want to look up, and you're going to have to look stuff up. You want to put in a Greek letter, you're going to have to remember what it is. Um, a lot of this is going to be Googling what you need, Googling formats you need, Googling um, whether you want a superscript or subscript. So I have some examples, but I definitely don't have everything you'll need. You'll have to go back and Google it. And again, practice it, practice it, practice it as you put a paper together. All right, so here's a paper. Um, it's an old paper I did for Economics Bulletin, like, I don't know, 2010. Uh, I did that in Word. And what I did was I took an image and redid it in R, and then I made the table, and, and I've got all the parts of the paper here. So um, this is what it looks like as the final result. So I've got my title, my affiliation, my date, which is today as I'm recording this. Um, got the abstract. You can see that if you write the word LaTeX in LaTeX, it will put it in its personal format. Um, and I basically, I walk you through, I kind of talk through the process. So this isn't really content. This is just talking. You should read what I wrote. Um, but uh, the, as I go, I've got the four parts, you know, four things you might need. I've got text. All right. So in the text, I have, there's a special way to italicize. So the journal title is italicized. I italicize software names. Um, but you can you can kind of see what the text looks like as you output it. Now you can change the margins. I have the abstract narrower. Some people have much less white space here, but I've got it kind of the way I like to do it. Now I've got an equation. This is an actual paper I use. It's got Greek letters as well as English letters or you know um, Roman or whatever. Um, so you've got superscripts and you've got a subscript parentheses. I've got the delta for the change, uh, like I mentioned uh, the Greek letter, eta as well as r for interest rate. Um, and so here you can, oh, and division too. So, so it's got some aspects of equations, but again, you want a summation or a product, you'll have to look how to make a capital Greek letter, um, or, you know, so forth. So you, this is by no means exhaustive, but you can see here the equation, which is numbered. Um, I put in a figure, all right, and there's a place with H for here, but you can also put things at the bottom or the top and so forth. Um, you can actually tell it where to put the figure, um, and, it, and they're not at the end like a lot of papers. They can be put in the text. I've got the header, or excuse me, the, the title, and then I've got uh, some footers, you know, you can explain your equations and so forth. But again, I'm talking you through it, so I just say you can put a footer here. So this is how it's placed. Sometimes you might have a wide format. There's a way to do that as well, um, and you can have multiple images. And then you've got tables. I put a table uh, here. Um, there's one trick is that I can't really bold as well because it makes the font bigger, so I italicize my significant stuff. Um, as you go, I kind of make this point. Like, if you want to, because this is coding, and I'll show you this in a second, but everything done here is basically coded. If you know, like, R, which I use more, or Python, or something like that, it's kind of easy to comprehend that you're going to be using the, you know, you're, you're kind of programming your text under the hood, all right? But if you want to use a sign that is used to code, you're going to have to set it up. So I made a point to use an ampersand or an and sign, percentage sign and a dollar sign in the text. You can see how it's set off here. Same thing with R bar squared. You have to per, you know, permanently do that. Remember, if you're used to Word, you can just kind of play around with uh, uh, you know, the fonts and stuff. But here, it's actually going to be coded in there, all right? So I took this table, all right? And this, again, this is the end result. And you can see it looks like a pretty typical table. I put line breaks. And I always talk about this. You don't you don't put black around each cell. You usually have just a few horizontal lines. 
I separate off the coefficients, right, which are in parentheses, and I put, again, italics in parentheses, or excuse me, uh, significant, 5% is in italics, um, rather than bold, just because you know, uh, LaTeX bold font is bigger. Um, then I set off my diagnostic statistics and so forth, and then I've got all the explanations. So this is actually a real table redone, um, and you can see how it looks. And then finally, I put a, a reference. Okay, and this is my this is the actual reference to the paper itself. So you can look it up if you want to see it in Word. Um, but this is the paper I sort of did a couple of parts of. And there's a separate file this pulls from, which always gives me a hard time. I always have to keep it the same title, and it always takes me a few times to run it. Right. So this is the end result. A PDF looks pretty decent. This is how I format it. Again, it's got the affiliation, it's got the abstract, it's, and then I talk about text, equations, figures, and tables. And finally, a reference at the end. Right. So what does it look like under the hood? Okay, so in my text works, I have this file called EMP Paper 2. Right. Don't ask what happened to EMP Paper 1, but things can go wrong. All right. So a lot of the stuff at the header, again, this is kind of like you're loading R packages. Um, but these are the things that I've found to be useful over time. So these are mine, and every time I make a paper, I just pull this in automatically. The Greek text, well, there's something that makes spaces between paragraphs. There's some stuff for graphics and math. All right, you might find that there are ones and that you use that you come along and you might want to keep them permanently. Right? So everything in here, or even curly quotes, because you don't want ugly straight quotes. Now, I can set the length and so forth. So all this stuff is sort of start out with. And it's starting out with the document class as a, as a letter paper, which is a, a document. You can do other things as well before writing a professional paper. I'm doing an article here, right? So I've got all the things, setting the length, beginning the document, my title. One big thing is that the slash and the curly brackets are going to do a lot of work in here. So if you make a title, you're going to say, you know, slash title. I believe it's forward slash. I know I always get them confused. And then what you want is inside the curly brackets, and then you close the curly bracket. Okay, so this happens a lot. Bold phase, italics, equations, and so forth. This is the slash, the thing you want to do, and then inside a set of curly brackets. Right? The, this is the paragraph break, is the double slash, and so forth. And I set the date for today. Now, I begin a new section. That's where the phrase abstract came from. And the, the, so you can see below text, these are all sections. Right? And so you can begin a new section. And in here, I've got slash LaTeX makes it the fancy font. I've got slash text IT for italics and so forth. So again, I'm not going through every single character here, but you can see if you want to do something special, you're going to have to code it and you're going to have to look it up. Text BF is boldface, right? But it's always slash thing you want to do, curly brackets. Comes up a lot, all right? So I got my equation. This is what the equation looks like. Okay, in the, in the document, it's well formatted, but here, everything you want to do, this is the subscript. This is the fraction putting the divisor sign. I got subscripts. I've got Greek letter eta. I've got uh, parentheses. I've got Greek letter delta. And because I capitalized D on delta, not the whole word, word just the capital D makes capital delta. Because remember, lowercase delta looks more like a lowercase D in English. All right. um, and so forth. So I've got all the things here. Now you'll have to look. You'll have to try. My suggestion is always, if you make one change, run it. And I'll show you what it looks like when you run it in a second. Now, um, I'll, I'll do that toward the end. Um, now, if you, well, I'm trying to see here. Uh, text H, that puts it here, right? But there's other placement as well. And I talked about that before. And I've got my captions and I've got footers, right? Now, to do a figure, you can, here's my section figures. Um, this uh, percentage sign is actually kind of like a hashtag or a pound sign or, or whatever it's called. Um, this, this is not red, um, but uh, here you can begin the figure and then you put the caption and so forth. Now the order is very important, all right? So follow the order with the caption and then you include the graphics. This is the JPEG that I included in the file. So if everything's in the same folder, it's gonna pull. So you should have all the figures you need right in that same folder and it should pull it right there. All right, and then finally you end the figure and then it moves on, all right? Now, if you make anything wrong, it's not gonna compile and I'll show you the compile when, I, when I'm done with this. Now, I put a table, you can center it and so forth. Um, you can stretch, I didn't do it on this one, but you can actually have stretch, uh, one multiple cell width cell, all right? And you can have um, you can do a little bit more than I'm doing here, but you can, my big advice is just visualize it and then Google it, right? It can be done, someone's already thought of it, all right? Uh, but you kind of have to know what you want it to look like, all right? Notice here, because I use an ampersand, ampersands are used all over in here, and you'll see it down here. If, ampersand is actually a coding symbol. So if you want to type and sign, you're gonna have to set it off with a slash, 
Okay, uh, same thing. This is how you write r bar squared. You open an equation with a dollar sign, and then the bar over the r, and then the, the because it's to the power of two, you, you use the caret symbol like before, and then you close your equation. Right? So everything you want to do typesetting wise, there's no little drag and drop, there's no word tools, you have to code it. Right? And again, I, I teach the classes in R and you might kind of, if you can kind of see how it's done in R, you kind of have this idea that you can um, program the words here. All right? Tables are a little complicated. You begin the table, I adjust the width, put the caption, and then here is L R R R R. This basically I had to count the number of cells. The first one, because it's the title or the name of each variable it's to the left and then the rest are right justified All right so this is the justification and then i'm separating off each cell with an and sign now you can actually make tables within r and a lot of my students do it what i do is i put it in excel and then i dump ch just change all the tab breaks to um, ampersands All right there's ways to do it that are better than the way i do it but i'm old so here we go so this is the break of the line break and then i, I italicized all the ones that are significant p values before point p values below 0 0.5 here, horizontal lines separating it out like I had. Um, you can see here, these are the t tab breaks, line breaks, and then I've got the uh, caption at the bottom, and then finally I end the table. Now, finally, and this is the way I do it, I don't cite the papers in text, so I use this no cite, but then I have to pull up this second file, which I have over here. It's only got one reference. This is what a text, a LaTeX reference looks like. It's got the, uh, this format. You can actually download, if you're putting together a bibliography, you could pull it in this format. It's already done for you. But it's an article, not a book, for example, or a report. And then this is all the format of the title. And then um, when you run it, it should uh, run it. A lot of times you have to run it first, but this is in a .bib format. All right, and then um, I've, I've got it not cited, and then I pull the paper here, but because this is a specific reference to a specific um, uh, file, it'll, it'll, a specific reference here, it'll pull this one, Hegarty 2010, from this file. You could have multiple of these, right? And I do it with no cite, but other people do it different ways. So this is how it looks coded, okay? Now I'm just gonna do, well, let me see this first. If I just type something random, I'm just putting some characters here, this arrow is going to turn it no, under normal conditions to the PDF, okay? If I do this, it's going to run. You can watch it run. It's going, going, going. All right, but here, because I put these characters here, it doesn't do anything. All right, this is actually a common thing here, and, and it's, going to, it's going to be sort of the bane of your existence once you start using this, is that any little error is going to make it not compile. So, so you, I always say you sort of troubleshoot as you go, especially if you're making tables, right? If you have an error in a cell, it's, it, it, which one was it? It's kind of like back in the old days with Christmas tree lights. When one goes out, they would all go out. Um, but now, you know, so now you can actually go through and troubleshoot. Um, but here, this should run fine. This is compiling all the code. All right. And as we go, all right, let's see here. All right. The EMP paper too. All right, can't, oh, because I've got it open. So that's another thing. So I might have to close it. All right, and so it's giving me another error. All right, and it, it, this actually overwrites. So, so make sure that you don't have anything here. So now it reopens it. So again, I was getting an error that I wasn't anticipating because I had the file open to look at. So this is what it looks like. You can actually save it to a PDF. So I basically re-ran what I did. Now, if I change something, I'm going to show you that I made a change. I'm going to add, I'm just going to say um, econ 310 stats 2. You'll see here when I rerun it, again, it runs through everything. It pulls every image and so forth. You can see that this thing that I added is here. Okay, so um, that is uh, Basically, any change you make, you have to recompile it. You look at it. It's a lot of just looking it over, making changes, and so forth. Okay, so that this is what's under the hood, right? So you, I usually start with a template. So any paper I do, I start with certain stuff. Um, but as you write a paper, I really do suggest looking at a file like this, right? Making sure you see what it looks like. You can change things. It's like anything you code. Change things, make it how you want it to look, and then run it, compile it, look at it, make changes, and then I'm old, I print it out. And because there's no good spell checker in this document, you might, you might any mistake you make is never going to be underlined, right? So look at everything, check your formats, check your spelling, check everything. But once you start with this, you wind up with a 
a um, working file, right? And again, I put the, the permanent one here. Um, you wind up with a working file uh, that, that, that is PDF format, can be read anywhere, and then you can use it for your own professional purposes. You can circulate the paper, show employers what you're capable of, write a stats paper and have a portfolio, and then you'll be, you know, have a professional, you know, qualification, you know, professional skill um, that will serve you as you start to write more economics papers.